Hi and welcome to our first annual HNHS Black History Month Oratorical Fest. Today we'll be hearing students recite poems and share artwork. We would like to first thank all of our sponsors, Student Council, CMT, and BSU. Now let us begin with a prayer. O oh God, we dedicate all that we do today to honor you. We ask your blessing on all that we think, do, or say. Blessed be the holy names of Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Blessed Mary Rose, pray for us. I'm Emily Barajas, and I will be reading Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beast with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like the moons and like suns with a century of tides, just like the hopes bringing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my heightenedness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me down with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huds of history's shame, I rise. Up from the past that's rotten in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping, a wide welling and swelling I bear in tide. Leaving behind the nights of terror of fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hopes of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lara Viriel. My name is Sarah Pena. And today, we will be performing the poem, Dreams by Lanston Hughes. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams dies, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when your dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. Thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Maddie, and I'm in ninth grade. Hi, my name is Haidea, and I am in 12th grade, and we will be performing The Peak, written by Maddie. We wake up every day to another morning light and dark. When the sun comes up, we are forced to leave the comfort of our beds. Our alarms are a harsh reminder that today is another day that we have to fight to be seen and heard. When the sun comes up, it is a reminder to keep climbing that mountain you were told was impossible to climb, the one that only the privileged reach. For those of us who are different, for those of us who stand out, we constantly find ourselves at the bottom of the mountain. Pero el mundo no para de girar porque algo es injusto. But the world will not stop spinning because something's unfair. Let me ask you, can you see the sunset over the water when you're at the bottom of a hill shaped so perfectly that it blocks what's right in front of you? When we lose our footing so close to the peak of the mountain, it is a harsh reminder that we will be pushed down every single day. But that will not stop us. As we regain our balance, we will push harder and harder to get up this mountain that seems endlessly long. We will push because now we feel challenged. Now we have to reach the top of the mountain because we have a need to feel accomplished. The privileged have it easy, we are told. They find trails and shortcuts that allow them to reach the peak of the journey with ease. The shortcuts never appear to us. Pero el mundo no para de girar porque algo es injusto. But the world will not stop spinning because something is unfair. The ones who don't have to try are the ones who laugh at us from the peak of the mountain. But they will never know what it's like to have to climb only to be pushed away. They will never know what it's like to get damaged along the way. Because they took the easy way. Despite their laughing and taunts, we will never give them the satisfaction of seeing us stop. We will crawl up the mountain until we reach the peak. 
We have gone through pain, suffering, and so many other things, but we will overcome it. And once we are all up the peak, we will have shown the people who have laughed at us that we are equal, but we will not laugh at them when they stare in awe. We will sit with the people who have laughed at us. We won't fight back for all the hurt they have caused because when we are all at the peak, it doesn't matter who you are. When the sun goes down at the end of the day, you are who you are and you cannot change that. El mundo no para de girar solo porque algo es injusto. The world will not stop spinning because something is unfair. When the sun goes down, we will all have to help each other climb the mountain. And when the sun goes down, we will all be there together as one to watch the sun as it sets. Thank you. Heads crowned with beautiful billowing hair, reaching towards the sky. Defying gravity, it's grace with more than meets the eye. In the deep roots of our scalp is a history filled with power. Cornrows and box braids and the hair salon for hours. Dark and kinky, wild and wavy, coiled and curled. Each strand a unique pattern, a well-worn path traveled to reach the end, then bounce back up again. That hair is a beautiful statement for the world to see. Hello, my name is Mayaria Garcia, and I'm a ninth grader. Today I'll be reciting the poem Vote by Nikki Giovanni. It is not a hug, nor a mistletoe at Christmas. It's not a colored egg at Easter nor a bunny hopping across the meadow. It's a vote saying you are a citizen, though it sometimes is chocolate or sometimes vanilla. It can be a female or a male. It is right or left. I can agree or disagree, but, and this is an important but, I am a citizen. I should be able to vote from prison. I should be able to vote from the battlefield. I should be able to vote when I get a driver's license. I should be able to vote when I can purchase a gun. I must be able to vote. If I'm in the hospital, if I'm in the old folks home, if I'm needing a ride to the polling place, I am a citizen. I must be able to vote. Folks were lynched. Folks were shot. Folks' communities were gay mattered. Folks who believed in the Constitution were lied to, burned out, bought and sold because they agreed all men were created equal. Folks vote to make us free. It's not cookies nor cake, but it is the icing that is so sweet. Good for the folks. Good for us. Thank you. My name is Presley. I'm a first year at Holy Names this year. Today I will be reciting an excerpt from Langston Hughes, his poem, Let America Be America Again. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain, seeking a home where he himself is free. America was never America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be the great strong land of love where never kings connive, nor tyrants scheme, that any man be crushed by one above. It was never America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath, but opportunity is real and life is free. Equality's in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in this homeland of the free. Say, who are you that mumbles in the dark? And who are you that draws your veil across the stars? I'm the poor white, fooled and pushed apart. I'm the Negro, bearing slavery scars. I'm the red man, driven from the land. I'm the immigrant, clutching the hope I seek. And finding only the same old stupid plan of dog eat dog, of mighty crush the weak.
I'm the man who never got ahead, never brick and stone, never furrow turned, that's made America the land it has become. I'm the man who sailed across those seas in search of what I meant to be home. For I'm the one who left dark Ireland's shore and Poland's plain and England's grassy lea and torn from black Africa's strand, I came to build a homeland of the free. The free? Who said the free? Not me, surely not me. The millions on relief today, the millions shut down when we strike, the millions who have nothing for our pay, for all the dreams we've dreamed, all the songs we've sung, and all the hopes we've had, and all the flags we've hung. Sure, call me any ugly name you choose. The steel of freedom does not stain from those who live like leeches on people's lives. We must take back our land again. America, oh yes, I say it plain. America was never America to me. And yet, I swear this oath, America will be. Thank you. Hello, I'm Ruby Lewis. I'm in the ninth grade and I will be reciting I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. The free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream to the current's end. He dips his wings in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The cage bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill where the cage bird sings of freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own. But a cage bird stands on the grave of dreams. His shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The cage bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the cage bird sings of freedom. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah Fleming and I'm in 12th grade. The poem I will be presenting is A Dream Within a Dream by Edgar Allan Poe. Take this kiss upon the brow, and in parting from you now, thus much let me avow. You are not wrong who deem that my days have been a dream. Yet if hope has flown away, in a night or in a day, in a vision or in none, is it therefore the less gone? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. I stand amid the roar of a surf-tormented shore, and I hold within my hand grains of the golden sand. How few, yet how they creep through my fingers to the deep, while I weep, while I weep. O oh God, can I not grasp them with a tighter clasp? O oh God, can I not save one from the pitiless wave? Is all that we see or seem but a dream within a dream? Thank you. Hi, my name's Tommy Shutt, and I'm going to be performing an original poem called Hope is a Bar of Soap. Okay. I say to whoever's listening, you will find hope and it will wash away your worries like a pleasant bar of soap, scented like lavender to bring peace and love to your home, because everyone needs a rest and to know that they aren't alone. Scented like citrus to wake you up in the morning, even when the world is dark and every day seems unrewarding. Scented like cinnamon to keep your heart drumming and will remind you daily that a positive change is coming. I hope that you enjoy your new bar of soap and I hope that it reminds you to always have hope. Thank you. Hi, my name is Charlotte Keedy, and today I will be reading an original poem that I wrote called, It Is Not Too Late. In our country, a black person walks through the night in the direction of their own home. 
The police have been called and the caller protests. It has not been done out of spite. Right. We label and we assume a reputation upon others, even though we've all been born to mothers, even though we've all witnessed the joy of the summers. We turn our heads in the opposite direction of the problems in hopes that it will solve them, in hopes that they will go away. But no amount of denial will dig us out from under this pile of hate we have buried ourselves beneath. Let me remind you that it is not too late to change our fate. There is no dictate that says hate cannot be destroyed. We can reach our arms up and out through the pile all the while we search for the sun, all the while we work together as one. And let me remind you of yet another thing. When we are possessive, we cannot be progressive. And when we judge or hold a grudge, there is nothing more dividing, nothing more aggressive, nothing more oppressive. Because what we possess cannot be shown through how we are dressed. What we possess cannot be shown through our skin tone. Because while you sit and judge other people's skin tones, you do not recall the fact that we are all created from the same bones. Remember that a child cannot grow if their dreams are told no. A flower cannot bloom if its seed is planted in a never-ending shadow of doom. Just like justice cannot flow if deep-rooted ideas have been sowed, have been watered, and have grown in this country that we call a free home. No, this is not a free home because the discrimination eating at our nation only holds people down, only forces people to drown. But if we learn to work together and dedicate ourselves to loving one another forever, I promise you that this is something we can endeavor, that our world will learn to love whomever, and this love will be a true and genuine treasure. Thank you. Death, grasp us at the reins, yelling insults of encouragement in the face of grief and pain. Every day a new body, every day a new name, added to the list, a list of names. A list of those taken too early, but I wish. I wish this was not a normal occurrence, but sadly it's foretold controlled by the media to achieve their main goal. All we see is a cover-up, not the truth, but the reality for many, but hopefully not for you. But that is not the only reason why we riot. Riot, a word used to undermine our rights to protest, exceptional youth fighting for their futures all coming together to speak for those unheard, those who live their lives afraid, helping progress our society towards change, even though some question if we are sane. For those who search and actively create change, do you notice something? Read again and again, realize that change can only start with us. After realizing, listen back to what I said. Read the letters at the beginning of each line after wish. And remember this, the time was eight minutes, the shots were 20 rounds, the police were always there, the police have us bound. Hello, my name is Teresa Asensio. I am Holy Names class of 2019 and a current sophomore at the College of Worcester. And today I will be reciting a poem entitled Movement Song by Audre Lorde. Please enjoy. I have studied the tight curls on the back of your neck, moving away from me. Beyond anger or failure, your face in the evening schools of longing through mornings of wish and ripen. We were always saying goodbye. 
in the blood, in the bone, over coffee, before dashing for elevators going in opposite directions, without goodbyes. Do not remember me as a bridge, nor a roof, as the maker of legends, nor as a trap door to that world where black and white clericals hang on the edge of beauty in five o'clock elevators, twitching their shoulders to avoid other flesh, and now there is someone to speak for them. Moving away from me into tomorrow's, morning of wish and ripen. Your goodbye is a promise of lightning, in the angel's last hand, unwelcome and warning. The sands have run out against us. We were rewarded by journeys away from each other, into desire, into mornings alone, where excuse and endurance mingle, conceiving decision. Do not remember me as disaster, nor as the keeper of secrets. I am a fellow rider in the cattle cars watching you slowly move out of my bed, saying we cannot waste time, only ourselves. Thank you. Hello, I'm Michaela Pulliam from the class of 2021, and I'm sharing with you two art pieces created by Mia Lorenzo, a Holy Names High School sophomore. She vibrantly depicts the significance, history, and beauty behind dreadlocks through her artistic medium of charcoal. The term dreadlocks originates from East African warriors and Holy Rastafarians in Jamaica. British colonizers in Africa saw these Rastafarians wearing these dreadlocks and labeled them as dreadful. In Jamaica, dreadlocks had a very strong influence on the Western world's view of black hair. Many people, even today, are targeted because of this natural and protective style. Recently, in 2017, the U.S. Army finally lifted the ban of women wearing dreadlocks and similar hairstyles while in service. After the Black Power movement in the 60s through the 70s, where hairstyles such as the Afro became a political statement, hair discrimination began to be addressed. Many members of the Black community decided to drop the word dread in the term dreadlocks and decided to call this beautiful hairstyle locks. Dreadlocks have negative implications because of the African slave trade, where colonizers labeled many slaves as unkept and dreadful. Dreadlocks can be found all over the world and in many civilizations. They are an uncultivated hairstyle that can be viewed more as a lifestyle. Locks, a far more positive and uplifting term when referring to this hairstyle, it is cultivated purposefully. They can be done by coiling, braiding, twisting, and palm rolling. Locks are representative of African and Nubian peoples whose hair locks naturally. They usually have them done in special salons, and they can even play with the width and length of the lock. Hi, Monarchs. It's your counselor, Miss Fletcher. I am so excited to have the chance to participate in the Oratorical Fest. I am actually introducing a piece of work that was written and produced by my brother, Jed Bloom. Mr. Bloom is a middle school teacher in Palo Alto, California. He has always used rap as a form of expression, and as a teacher, he uses it consistently to make learning more engaging for his students. Most recently, Mr. Bloom created a rap for the 21-day Racial Equity Challenge launched by Palo Alto Unified School District. His rap, titled A Letter to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., was shared with the entire Palo Alto school community. I am so happy to be able to share it here with our Holy Names community. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting this wonderful event for our school. Dr. Martin, thank you for the revolution that you started. Thank you for the territory that you charted. Thank you for the light you brought the broken hearted. But though you served up justice on the platter, it's difficult believing black lives matter. 
when I'm still seeing black lives scattered When I saw Miss Brianna's life shattered In her own bedroom watching TV And the people cried out, do you see me? And Mr. George Red stopped flowing easy Dr. King, can we ever stop the bleeding? It's not like us to give up on a dream But dreams hurt when they rattle by a scheme And folks bail who you thought was on the team And the visionary house is rotted at the beams uh. Dr. Martin, they told you to wait Equal rights, they told you to wait to lift burdens, they told you to wait, but the march for black life won't wait. Dr. Martin, they told you to wait. Equal rights, they told you to wait. To lift burdens, they told you to wait, but the march for black life won't wait. Dr. King, you would never want to wait. Every victory you took, time to celebrate. But the battle presses on to the holy gates. The fierce urgency of now brings us to a fate. I'ma pray, I'ma think, I'ma meditate On the soul force love, I'ma contemplate Cause I'm wishing on a mission to be kissing justice and peace On a clear summer day, hope never dies Just as long as anybody ever tries Keep breaking down walls, never satisfied Till the next generation see a better life Till the mother ain't scared to sing a lullaby In the tears and the fears of a bitter night Well the castle got built on the other side Keep leveling the field, yeah we better try I can see it in the gleam of the eyes of the king With his blood and his call to let freedom ring I could hear it in song that the cage bird sings to let justice roll to every living thing. Yes, love calls us to be patient, but neighborhoods still got segregation, and math lanes still got separation, and black and brown lives overly incarcerated. They told you to wait. Equal rights, they told you to wait. To lift burdens, they told you to wait. But the march for black life won't wait. Dr. Martin, they told you to wait. Equal rights, they told you to wait. To lift burdens, they told you to wait, but the march for black life won't wait. As you pulled into Montgomery bus station, you called out to a white supremacist nation. Who waited for some real education? Come and get a dose of anti-racist medication. And as you sit and remember all your great deeds, we acknowledge that your words what we all need. But you died because part of your purpose was to make the powerful white man nervous. All this pain that I'm harboring, cause vigilante struck Mr. Arbery. I can channel to a dream cause it's understood that you never gave up on the hope of brotherhood. Keep moving, just keep moving. How'd you find resources to be soothing? Hearts in the hurricane, a long shot goals. Signed on a letterhead, shattered that mold. Injustice, so systemic. A highly visible race pandemic. With love, apply that pressure. Dr. King, give us your treasure. I'll purchase that dream that you're selling me. But it's a clear, soft voice that is telling me. If I don't recognize what's implicit, then I'm simply complicit. Dr. Martin, they told you to wait. Equal rights, they told you to wait. To lift burdens, they told you to wait. But the march for black life won't wait. Dr. Martin, they told you to wait. Equal rights, they told you to wait. To lift burdens, they told you to wait. But the march for black life won't wait. This concludes our first annual Oratorical Fest. Thank you to everyone who participated in this event and for everyone watching. Thank you again to all of our sponsors. Hope you all have a lovely day.